The Mega Bowl drafts are starting this weekend. That means there's still a little bit of time to get into the largest fantasy football tournament in the known universe. Come compete against thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Foot Clan members with the ultimate prize of the glory of winning the Mega Bowl and a spot in the Listener League. Check it out, megalobowl.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Go with some Doppler effect there. What's going on? Thursday. August thirty oh, first. No, 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 no. We don't do we don't do sirens on an audio program. I there think, is nothing I hate more than when I'm listening to a song or a podcast and I any agree. kind of siren comes on. I go, so you, oh no, they've caught me. So you, you think that the uh, our, our listeners, which I believe are you know it's a, it's a high ninety percent located here in the United States of America, yeah. are going to be concerned about that. European ambulance that was on the way. I look. I took that as a compliment. That means that Jason thought my incredibly bad impression of a siren was so realistic. <laughs> Honestly, that drivers got, are pulling over. Thought, I got scared. He here, thought he got and caught. And I'm sitting down. And I was like, D- "Am I speeding right now?" <laughs> he got caught by an ambulance. <laughs> That's what just happened. Uh, welcome into the show. They're on to me. They're on to me. They're going to haul me off to the hospital. Don't give me IVs. Oh, yeah. You may choose prison oh. over over getting an IV yeah. or a needle. Oh, yes, man. sir. Um, welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome in. Uh, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers. This is the fantasy MVP episode, one of our favorite episodes of the year, where... The three of us, along with uh, a large group of very smart people, share their fantasy football MVP picks. We also have a surprise special guest uh, that will round out the group on today's episode of the show. And uh, I'm excited. Deucers are in the building. Happy, healthy, present, accounted for, ready for football. Uh, you're kind of you're kind of my MVP back there. Mm-hmm. Aww. Aww. Which one? Yeah, it, I, I M leave it, stands for most. I leave it right there. You're kind of my MVP, and then okay. they can they can fight over it. Uh, but we have NFL news to talk about as well. Lots going on. The Ultimate Draft Kit, if you're drafting this weekend, still available. UltimateDraftKit.com. Still getting updated. And the Megala Bowl, which Mike just talked about, it's up over 15,000 entries now. I just checked it. Megalobowl.com. That's M E G A L A B O W L. Megalobowl. It's the easiest word in the English language. Megalobowl.com for details, how to enter, how to join. Um, we're drafting the 3rd through the 6th mm-hmm. of September. So today's the 31st of August. So you still have time to basically, you get in there, you sign up, you claim your draft date, and then the countdown begins to your Megalobowl draft. And this year, it's going to be fun. I'm in a league. Jason's in a league. in a league. Mike's. Again, I don't talk about it. Maybe in a league. And so you may end up <laughs> playing with us as well. I'm very mysterious. And uh, Jason, now you promised you would take it down last year. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Okay. But I did Promises not, were broken, I Jason. I did not win. But this year. Last, this year, I'll definitely take it down. Okay. For sure. You can find us over on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Mike is at FF Hitman. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. Follow me at Andy Holloway. I enjoyed that our social media guru, the rap scallion himself, posted some behind the scenes video of Jason testing out the t shirt cannon. <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy we got that because I want people to know that that t shirt cannon is a cannon. Yes. And it could go through the back of that building. Just take out all the lights. You want them to know that you showed restraint when actually using it in the show? Yeah. Because you almost blew a I hole, hole in the back of the theater. I could have killed a man. <laughs> you, you really could have. Um, and some people were like, I'm really impressed that you spent the time <laughs> you hear- making sure you didn't kill us. <laughs> Did you guys hear about Bob? No, what happened? A t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be bad. 
Um, okay. Anything else we got to cover here at the top? We pretty good. I see nobody telling me I need to stop. Then All proceed. Right. We're moving forward. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Yeah, the Listener League draft was last night. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got that in the books. I, ha I was drafting from the 14th spot in a 14-team league. Nice. So that was, uh, that was a bit of an adventure every round, waiting and waiting and hoping that somebody would make it back to me. But it was a lot of fun. We had a good time, and uh, we're planning on winning that league so that we can fit an extra person next year mm -hmm. into the Listener League. All right, here's some news. The Vikings and TJ Hawkinson agreed to terms on a long-term extension, making him one of the highest paid tight ends in football. So that old ear infection and uh, that sore tummy or whatever else he was dealing with, I bet it's better now yeah, the, with four-year, $68.5 million deal. contract. 40 to, uh, 42 and a half guaranteed. The king of the forest is now uh, one of the highest paid tight ends of all time. The king of the forest. I like oh, it. that. Got me good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like that. It's a, it's a little bit of a deeper cut. If you haven't seen a photo of T.J. Hawkinson lately, just know that he doesn't have courage, and he, if there is a wizard that can present it to him, he will accept it. <laughs> okay, he's doing good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here is some very important news. Oh, this one stinks. Yeah, but it is. Pretty relevant for fantasy drafts going on right now. The Dolphins have placed Jeff Wilson Jr. on injured reserve, will miss at least four games, and Mike McDaniel's quote about the midsection injury and finger issue was that he couldn't protect himself, so they're giving him time to heal. He went on to say, quote, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if he makes a return this season. We will let his body tell us. That is a quote I do not like. For the prospects of, well, will will he be back in week five? This looks like a long-term potential injury. I have been drafting Raheem Mostert for months. Yes, you have. Uh, simply because he can be taken with nearly the last pick in drafts. Now, that might change a little this weekend. But if you get Raheem Mostert in the 11th round, Re reach for him. You Look, have a starter. When you get to double-digit rounds, when you, uh, to me, like Even you get to round. I think before. Sure, but I'm saying in, in round 10 or so, he's still going to be there because he's so far down in, in ADP. If you're in a casual home league, you could still keep drafting other guys. Reach on Mostert. Mostert should start the season in an extremely strong position for fantasy. It's a great running game. Devon A. Chain is coming back from his own injury. They hope that he practices this week and is ready for week one, but that's he's, not... Uh, yeah, at practice wearing non-contact jersey. Right, so he's, he's not going to just be the guy week one by any means, which means it's Mostert. Mostert's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not just Mostert, which... Ahmed, yeah. Yeah, so our, in the listener league, I tried to play the ADP game last night. With uh, Mostert? Yeah, with yeah, Mostert. Yeah, I did too. With Mostert, and I took Rashad Penny and because he was at the top of the ADP. I want to take... Like, I don't know what's going to happen with Penny with the Eagles, but I still want to take that chance. And I was like, Moster will easily make it back. He did not make it back, and that sucked. And it was even worse this morning. But uh, Saman Ahmed, I like you need to pay attention. It won't be just Moster. Mm -hmm. He's like, also hurt. Is he neck injury? Wait, what? Wait, when did Ahmed get hurt? Day to day. Okay, all right. Well, day to that's, day with a neck injury, probably from you know that's swinging his neck so hard, seeing Jeff Wilson land on IR, that yeah. he's like, whoa. But the point is, last year when it was Moster and Jeff Wilson. It could, it was a little frustrating because it kind of went back and forth because both were getting worse. Here, so I think that there is a I think there's a strong chance that Mostert is the one, but it might even be a one A one B with Ahmed until uh, A chain's ready to go. That's the biggest point on Mostert. He will not be deleted from the rotation at any point, regardless right. of these injury recovery situations. He had games that were great with Jeff Wilson last year. He'll have games that are good with. Devon A chain. Like he A chain will also is not get hurt. Yeah, I mean he will delete himself Sorry. from the rotation at some point this year. He did pretty well for himself last year yeah, in terms no, of staying healthy. Last year was a great season. I, I also think this does bump up uh Devon A chain. Devon A chain's someone yes. that I haven't been drafting over the last couple of weeks because of the shoulder injury that he sustained in preseason. He's not ready to go. I figured he'd come along very slowly. 
d- kind of buried to start the season on the depth chart. But if the other guys ahead of him are injured, and Jeff Wilson is obviously not going to be there, that'll just thrust him forward a little bit uh, quicker. Yep. Joe Burrow returned to practice. <sighs> Big fist pump let's, from Mike's dynasty let's, team. Let's go. Uh, we have Chris Ballard talking about Jonathan Taylor. Uh, said he was still complaining of pain in the ankle, which led him to be placed on PUP. Which uh, I did receive an update. Apparently, the last year of a player's contract, the contract will not toll if they stay on the pup the whole year. So we will have a showdown at some point this season when Jonathan Taylor is ready to go because he has said, I'm not going to play for this team. I want more money. And the management has said, we will not trade you even though I, you know that turned into go ahead and seek a trade, but you're hurt. So something will happen this year with Jonathan Taylor. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Jay Lonnie Woods on injured reserve. Yeah, Colts tight end. And then Jets head coach Robert Sala, Sala said that the team would be smart with how they use Brees Hall early in the season. We've never been worried about his availability. We just have to be smart, said head coach Robert Sala. Um, the excitement is, well, let's just throw him out there, but we need to be smart, need to be diligent. Uh, so there you go. He feels like he can take 30 touches. We have to be smart with him. You want to start week one with Dalvin Cook and Raheem Mostert, you might have a good f- first week. Yeah, I mean, this was always the expectation. When when you're drafting Brees Hall, you're hoping that he has big plays in these first couple weeks because he's not going to get the volume that is bankable. Uh, but towards the end of the season, I, I, I still think he'll take over him and, and – uh, make Dalvin Cook a a distant second on the depth chart. Zach Ertz uncertain if he can play week one. Makes sense. So what? Who cares? Yeah, agreed. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Who's your fantasy MVP? I missed a piece of news, Brooks. Was, oh. it, was there something that I didn't mention? Just enough you want to mention the Chiefs wide receiver uh, news there. Oh, uh, just about uh, uh, Justin Ross and Rasheed Rice and Rasheed Rice being package players to start. So uh, look, Twitter, <laughs> Twitter loves Justin Ross so much, uh, but it, he made the fifty-three man roster, but it's going to take a while it, it again I, is that one of the fantasy bullet points for a player made which, the 53 yeah well it's certainly very important first step it I mean, certainly starts Sky Moore with is going to be a starter he's going to yes. have the first opportunity and Kadarius Tony's going to be there from week one and we've been kind of you know necessarily ignoring him due to the injury and the in, impending injury that he hasn't had yet that he will but those guys are going to have week one opportunities they Patrick Mahomes has to throw the football to some other players Juju had a relevant fantasy season which is where sky Moore is likely to start i've been drafting um, a lot of sky Moore. yeah and and canaries tony could absolutely have a surprise week one what's funny is this depth chart at wide receiver has seemed like just hot garbage for you know since the last year since i got rid of tyreek and now you're going R- rushy rice has looked good and justin ross has looked good now they've got two strong rookies coming in you add Kadarius tony the year two st- you know, hopeful leap for Sky well, Ross, Moore that probably won't happen. Yeah, Ross is a second-year guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's basically his first yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. missed it. But um, th- this could end up being a really good depth chart. When I, I've been, like, going, man, Mahomes is just going to do it again, isn't he? Like, of course. It's good for Mahomes. I mean, but, but it's not – I don't think it's good for fantasy. Outside of, like, one shot on one guy, and if it doesn't work out, like, you didn't even mention Justin Watson. Oh, superstar. Justin Watson will catch touchdowns and make you say, crap, I played a different guy. All right, talk to me about how you define a fantasy MVP because this is the fantasy sure. MVP show. I hit that drop, which means we're going to start listening in on some of the fantasy MVP picks. So we reach out to our friends around the industry, love this episode, get you know some outside perspective, and I leave it up to them. I say, hey, who's your fantasy MVP? And is that your favorite, just your favorite pick, your favorite – favorite value pick, your favorite sleeper, the player you think is most likely to break out, you know, just who's your MVP? And it's pretty much a guy that you are drafting everywhere you possibly can. And that's kind of the criteria that we give them. 
All right, we're going to kick it off with J.J. Zacharyson from uh, at, well, it's at Late yeah, Round Quarterback on Twitter. LateRound.com. That's right. And uh, here we go. Hey, nerds. J.J. Zacharyson of Late Round <laughs> Fantasy Football here. When thinking fantasy MVP, most people probably think biggest value. And biggest value is usually someone drafted in the late rounds. But I'm going to go with an early round pick. I'm going to go with Tony Pollard as my fantasy MVP. I know he'll be gone in the second round, but he falls off draft boards at RB5 or RB6. He should be at least RB4 in my eyes. And that's a significant difference in the early rounds of your draft. There may be some concern about the Cowboys just not giving him a much bigger workload than he's already seen. But in three games without Ezekiel Elliott over the last three years, Pollard's running back rush share per game has been around 73%, which is what we see from top 10 backs. In those contests, he scored 31, 34, and 22 PPR points. Getting him in round two is amazing. He's the perfect mix of floor and upside within a running back landscape that lacks a ton of obvious league winning players. All right. Have we have we talked too little about Tony Pollard? I mean, I, I drafted him for the first time in the listener league last night. I went back to back Pollard and Jameer Gibbs yeah. at the end of the First round, early second. It was a juicy start. Uh, we, I think we've talked about him fairly. He, uh, I kind of he got featured in uh, my article, my one one article that I do a year. My my hit squad where I kind of look every round, my favorite pick, and that's based off of uh, what I think is the best value. I love Tony Pollard. I keep drafting him in our mock drafts. I I get him pretty much everywhere we can go or anywhere that I possibly can. Well, let's turn to Rich Rebar. At Lord Reeves on Twitter, works for Sharp Football Analysis, and see if he agrees. What's going on, fantasy footballers? <laughs> this is Rich Rebar of Sharp Football Analysis, and my fantasy MVP for 2023 is Tony Pollard. Right. It feels like people are trying to talk themselves out of Tony Pollard the same way they did Austin Eckler three years ago when yeah. the Chargers chose to extend him and let Melvin Gordon walk. Among 42 running backs, so 100 or more carries last season, Pollard was second in the rate of carries to go for 10 or more yards. He was first in yards after contact per carry. His yardage and touches have gone up every year of his career. And with 232 touches last season, that's set to happen again this year. He has just 13 games with 15 or more touches in his career. In those games, he's averaged 19.6 PPR points per game, 112.6 yards from scrimmage with 13 touchdowns. In three games without Ezekiel, he scored 31.2, 33.7, 21.8 PPR points and Elliot is gone now so we have a full line to goal line carries for the first time in his career don't be don't make the mistake of not drafting Tony Pollard in the second round because he should be a first round fantasy pick this year it's so, a lot of agreement it's a lot of numbers I promise there, not all the MVP picks are Tony Pollard but this is a well, uh, let, almost, me, let me go next my MVP <laughs> is Tony Pollard welcome to the Tony Pollard MVP <laughs> show no, I mean you do you do have agreement there between a couple of smart voices just with the opportunity and I thought that the most astute point that I was nodding my head to is just the fact that we are trying to talk ourselves out of it. Right. Uh because you know it just seems like it's almost like it's too juicy so we don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The too good to yeah, be it true feels situation. Like a mirage. They literally drafted a, a 5 foot 5 inch running back that just to calm our fears that goal line could be lost <laughs> to Tony Pollard. So, uh, you know, we're sitting here having to explain who Rico Dowdle is to the <laughs> listeners yesterday. Like, Tony Pollard is set up to succeed on a team that, look, I think Dallas will compete for that division. I really do. Yeah, I, you know, everything at the beginning of the year feels like you know, everything that happened last year will just happen again. This is a good football team with a great defense, uh, with a competent to great quarterback, and a running back that has done nothing but impress us. So I, I think I understand um, – you know, the, the well-made points of these two gentlemen. I really like the comp of Austin Eckler because <clears throat> I've been too afraid of the Lamar Miller comp, the very gets the efficient workload. guy who gets the workload yeah. bump and the efficiency comes down. But uh, the the actual talent of Tony Pollard, just watching him on the field, you go, he, he is he's much more special than Lamar Miller was. All right, let's go ahead and turn it over to Kendall Valenzuela. Fantasy Life Senior Analyst and Director of Social over there. One of our favorite people in the industry. Let's get her fantasy MVP pick. 
All right, guys, this is Kendall Valenzuela, my MVP for the 2023 fantasy season. To me, it's got to be Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, I am buying into all the training camp hype. I am buying into all the electric videos we've seen posted throughout social media. I'm all in on Calvin Ridley this season. He is ready to be back on the field, and to me, he's going to make up for all the time that he's lost. In Ridley's last full season, he finished as a top five fantasy option. He had 90 passes, 1,374 yards, and nine touchdowns. So I understand people want to be cautious because his last full season was in 2020. I get that. I think it's going to backfire, though. I am so scared to leave drafts without drafting Calvin Ridley. It's hard for me to pass up on his name. Like I said, he finished as the wide receiver four overall, 18.8 fantasy PPR points per game. I know skeptics are going to be concerned about the one and a half seasons that he's lost, but I'm scared to leave a draft without Calvin Ridley. He's my MVP. Look, I'm pretty bought in on Calvin Ridley. Uh, You know, he just, he runs at a different speed. He plays at a different level than the other receivers on that roster. And so I, I'm very optimistic. I'm on board with this pick. Yeah. Uh, uh, From, from the get go, you know, when ADP first came out and was kind of set uh, early in the off season, it was like, wow, Calvin Ridley that yeah. high. That seems pretty crazy because he hasn't played football in years. We don't know how he is. I think it's the, the unique situation that allows the training camp videos to be important. You know, you don't want to buy the hype of training camp and, oh, these videos look good. But when you haven't seen a guy on the field. Yeah, that's your only you, opportunity to evaluate them. Yeah, and, and, you, and he certainly has not looked like he's lost a step. I mean, the beat writers out there. There are beat writers that have worked there for 20 years that say this is the third best player that they've ever covered as, you know, a member of this organization. The what best? Third. Third. Third best, best player. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's, that's still pretty high. Like of all time. Okay. But who were the other two? Uh, I do not remember. So covering the – covering Jacksonville? Yeah. Oh, okay. Could I'm going like, to give one to MJD. Like PSA, I was going to go Jones Drew. Maybe Fred Taylor. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I just would have that would have been good information. The <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have that information. I do. It's such a funny, it's a funny quote. Like, yeah, I'm gonna. How how far can you go? Like this guy is the that eighth was, best player now, I've seen at camp. To be fair, I think he was saying he's one of the three best. I don't know that it was ordered. Okay, I don't All have right. the tweet in front. Of <laughs> no, I, it's fine. It's just, I was sorry. very hesitant to buy into Calvin Ridley at the, at the opening ADP. And I, I have, I've, I've changed my opinion on him. And surprisingly, where when we started actually getting evidence, oh no, Calvin Ridley's looking real good. All the reports are great. His ADP didn't really move. It just, it just locked right in. I'm surprised that he didn't skyrocket to the moon. So I think that he is a really good value where he's going right now. All right, quick break and back with some more fantasy MVP picks. I would not have bought into Calvin Ridley if he was only one of the top six that that yeah, guy had right. ever seen at that camp. That would have been kind I, of embarrassing. I draw the line there. All right, it's time to turn to a couple of folks within these walls. Let's get the editor-in-chief, deucer extraordinaire, host of the DFS Embedding and Dynasty podcast, Kyle Borgannoni himself with his fantasy MVP pick. Foot Clan, I'm Kyle Borgannoni, fellow deucer, editor-in-chief, DFS and Dynasty Pod host for the okay. Ballers. We said right. that, Kyle. And my fantasy MVP for the 2023 season is Jackson Smith and Jigba, rookie wide receiver, for the Seattle Seahawks. This might be a bit of an unconventional pick for fantasy MVP, but as the esteemed Jason Moore once said mm. on episode 754 Sounds of the Fantasy like Footballers, no risk it, no biscuit. And biscuits can lead to diabetes. <laughs> yes, I get it. He recently underwent surgery to repair a small broken bone in his wrist. But whether it's week one or after, I need to remind everyone, JSN is that dude. His over four yards per route run as a 19-year-old at Ohio State far surpassed teammates Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And the worry is that he's only going to be a slot wide receiver behind DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. But in preseason, he showed his versatility across the formation Keep in mind, many of the best wide receivers in the NFL came into the league labeled as slot-only guys. Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson. With rookie wide receivers, we have to draft with this question in mind. Where will these guys be taken next year? Since 2014, we've seen 18 first-round wide receivers have 50-plus receptions as a rookie, a number everybody and their mama expects JSN to hit this year. 
All 18 of them were drafted as the top 30 wide receiver the next year and 10 of them in the top 15. We will be talking about JSN next year in the same breath as his Ohio State teammates, a borderline wide receiver, one for fantasy. But this isn't just a down-the-road dynasty take. JSN can be a second-half hammer for your fantasy teams this year. We know rookie wide receivers often start out slow, but once the rocket ship takes off for a rookie wide receiver, good luck trying to trade for them. Right now, you get to draft him in the eighth round as your wide receiver four and wait for him to just explode. The draft discount is glorious, the upside is massive, and the pick for MVP is obvious. It's JSN. All right, some uh, fierce words yeah. on behalf of JSN. Do you buy it? I I regretted drafting zero. I mean, like every rookie wide receiver I drafted last year, later in the draft, I did not regret any of them. Yeah, it. it I think he's he's a great pick. Look, I'm still very pro team Tyler Lockett. I think D DK Metcalf can have a great season as well. I think there's room for all three of them. Uh, it's. It will be interesting to see how the season plays out if if he really does replace one of those guys for some two set wide receiver uh, action for Seattle, but he's it's talent draft talent. He is I can't believe he fell that far in the draft. Like I I think the NFL made a huge mistake letting him fall into what the twenties or so for for Seattle. It was it was a wild drop, and I think that that JSN is going to be fantastic. Twentieth uh, overall. So that's the twenties. Yeah, no, you yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You no, got that, it. The, you're in. All right. He's one of the twenty <laughs> top players picked in the draft. Um. Okay. Yeah. JSN. The, it's hard for me to like. Like that's just not going to be a very fun analysis situation in future years. Breaking down Seattle. Like maybe right. maybe it will. It, it's probably going to naturally happen with Lockett kind of. Going the way of the old man. Eventually, he will. He will feel in. Because you don't like, you lived with the Boyd Higgins, right? And then Chase arrives, and you you can't like no one drafts Tyler Boyd. I right. I've watched him just trickle down into nothingness. So it's hard for three players to bring you the kind of consistency every week, and yet you know Jason has to be one of them. At yeah. some point here. It's certainly possible. And just it, it, since you mentioned it, like looking at the dynasty outlook, Tyler Lockett, they owe him a lot of money. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see how Seattle handles it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I hate to tell you guys, but he is. I mean, he's not going to be your favorite forever. Lockett? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. someday he'll join Adam Thielen. Yeah, yes, he will. All right. Matthew Betts' turn. I'm afraid of introducing all of the his his accolades and titles because he may just do it himself but he's our injury expert you can find him on twitter at fantasy pt and we'll just we'll give the shout out the fun fact bets did send us a clip with tony pollard <laughs> and we said uh we can't have that we can't have it just be all tony pollard all the time so give us a different one yeah i mean mid show i may have sent a trade offer for tony pollard oh so good we'll luck see. What is up, Foot Clan? This is Matthew Betts, the Ballers Injury Analyst and co-host of the Dynasty and DFS podcasts. My fantasy MVP for the 2023 season is Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert. Look, last year it just didn't work out for <laughs> Herbert, and he still finished as the quarterback 11. What went wrong? Well, everything. Keenan Allen injured his hamstring in week one, then missed essentially half the year. Mike Williams got banged up. The offensive line was injured off and on all year and Herbert himself dealt with a rib injury that affected his fantasy production for about a month. To put some numbers to it, just 23% of Herbert's dropbacks last year came with both Big Mike and Keenan Allen on the field together, and in that sample, Herbert's 77 completion rate would have led the entire NFL. Herbert is also one of fantasy football's most obvious bounce-back candidates, specifically in the touchdown department, after his touchdown rate plummeted from 5.7% in 2021 to 3.6% in 2022, despite attempting 699 passes last season, aka the second most in the NFL. If that touchdown number bounces back to even league average, Herbert has a great chance to beat his ADP and put up some big-time fantasy numbers. With new OC Kellen Moore in town, the Chargers offense should remain extremely pass-heavy, up in pace, and Herbert should be pushing the ball down the field more often this season, which should help keep him in contention for the league lead in passing yardage. Oh, and one final note on Herbert's bounce back season that's going to come this year. He's quietly due for more fantasy production with his legs. 14 quarterbacks logged 50 plus rush attempts last season. Justin Herbert, 
aka your fantasy MVP, is the only one who didn't score a single touchdown with his legs, and 12 of those 14 quarterbacks ran for three plus scores. If you pass on the elite options at the top of the draft board, Herbert is an awesome target in the middle rounds. Um, that's the best audio Betsy's <laughs> ever put forth. I, he doesn't do that on the regular shows, right? I don't know. Hmm. I liked the, the, the bonus we got there about the running. Jason didn't uh, bother to bring that up. Actually, I did bring up that exact same did you? stat. No, uh, I didn't listen. Thanks for listening <laughs> I on, didn't listen. at our live show. I was um, making an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, you assumed he would not bring that up. <laughs> I uh, I obviously agree with this. He was my breakout uh, bold prediction pick to be the number one quarterback this season. It Justin Herbert's situation is very difficult for me because I, I lived that entire experience last offseason, including just acknowledging all of – all of the things that were present for him last year are present for him this year. Uh, what happened last year is he was dealt some really uh, tough hands with the injuries to his wide receivers, with the injuries to his ribs. Um, it, it just kind of – the plan didn't come together. So, uh, you know, maybe this year, Jason. Yeah. You can live the life I wanted to live I will year. show you how it's done. <laughs> All right, moving on. Danny Kelly, co-host of the Ringer Fantasy Football Show and Ringer NFL Draft Show with his fantasy MVP. What's up, ballers? Danny Kelly here from the Ringer Fantasy Football Show, and my MVP for the 2023 season is Lamar Jackson. And look, I get it. He's been a little bit disappointing over the last few years. He's underwhelmed relative to his ADP. He's missed too many games. But I do think this is the year he puts it all back together and turns back into the guy who we saw win the real-life MVP back in 2019. The Ravens have put together a really talented group of pass catchers for him, along with Mark Andrews. They signed Odell Beckham, who has looked great in training camp. They drafted Zay Flowers, who looked awesome in the preseason. They get back Rashad Bateman. They get a healthy J.K. Dobbins back onto the field, and they could get a nice jump from tight end Isaiah Likely. Most importantly, add in the Todd Monken effect, which should transform this Ravens offense from one of the slowest, run-heaviest groups in the NFL to potentially an up-tempo, spread-out, pass-heavy scheme. And there is no ceiling to what this offense could do. More plays, more yards, more points and a much bigger pie for all the above-mentioned players to split up in fantasy. Lamar brings potential to rush for over 1,000 yards, and he could lead the NFL in passing touchdowns. That's exactly what he did back in 2019 when he won a million people their leagues. And so I'm just hoping that's what he can do this year. Okay, uh, Lamar Jackson, I, I'm sure you will have. You know I like it. Yeah, Mike, Mike will be on board. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no notes. Before we comment further, I have – a feeling somebody else has a similar opinion. What's up, everybody? Marcus Grant from NFL Media. And if I'm talking about my fantasy MVP for 2023, it's going to be Lamar Jackson right now being drafted as the fourth or fifth quarterback, depending on what room you're in. But this is a guy who has the potential to be the QB one overall, maybe even the highest score in fantasy football. We already know about the rushing upside. That is not going away. What is different this year is that he is working with what is probably the deepest wide receiver core he has had in his career. Now, granted, there are still some question marks. What is Odell Beckham going to be after another knee injury? Can Rashad Bateman return from injury? What is Zay Flowers going to do in his rookie season? But there is talent here in this room. They've got Mark Andrews and Todd Monken. Pulling the levers on this offense, I expect it to be more of a vertical passing game. So you're getting Lamar in the fourth round. The possibility that he is the top scorer overall, it's as good a situation as you can possibly imagine. No I notes. Feel, I feel like, yeah, you got no notes. No I, notes. I just feel like that, you know, maybe this is just my personality. Maybe this is nine years of fantasy. And, and like, I don't know if there's been a more consistently positive drumbeat for one offensive situation where nobody can say anything potentially negative about it than this Lamar Jackson one, where it's like bona fide guaranteed. Uh, you know, I know there was a lot of excitement around Denver last year in the off season and where they got picked, but like this sure. situation, even more than that has just been exclusively positive. Um, and, and I don't think I've heard much detraction from that. You've been a detractor. You've, you've, <clears throat> you've, told the world how I've been, much you hate I'm the just, Ravens. No, no, no. I've hung some street signs that say, slow down, this road is slippery. It's it's a cliffside. Like, the view from the top is great, but you got to get there the right way. You can't just slam on the gas, and that's how I felt everybody 
has handled the Ravens. Yeah, I'm I'm not convinced necessarily that Todd Monken's going to come in here and make the Baltimore Ravens a better team. I I am you know I think they could turn the ball over a lot. They could uh, you know um, hurt the defense in certain situations first year under the <laughs> system. But I am convinced from a fantasy perspective, like you know it's like when Jameis Winston with Todd Monken threw thirty interceptions. It didn't matter. It was pretty cool. It was yeah. like, heck yeah, I'm glad that went pick six. Get back on that field and throw it. All right, we're going to share our fantasy MVPs, and then we have one extra special guest to round out this episode, so you want to stay tuned for that. I'll be brief. My fantasy MVPs, I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm cheating this yeah, year. A little bit you are. Um, it is Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, wide receivers for the San Francisco 49ers. Both of them, I think, are being drafted too low. We've seen Debo's ceiling before up at number two. He came out not in shape last year. The contract situation, all reports this year, very positive. And I think this is just one of those uh, reactions, right? You you had the incredible year, drafted very high, a lot of disappointment. Now he's drafted too low, in my opinion, and I think he has the potential on a Super Bowl contender to be a dominant force. And then Brandon Ayuk last year, 114 targets. Uh, he was the wide receiver 15, and he's still being ignored in fantasy drafts. Like, Brandon Ayuk is sitting out there with a real opportunity to be a uh, wide receiver one, potentially, in this offense. I think both guys will be bringing fantasy MVP value to your roster this year, and uh, Debo brings the rushing upside in this in this offense, and they work game plans around him. I'm very excited for both players, and I think they are both co-fantasy MVPs for your fantasy team. All right. I like it that you get two ways to go down <laughs> on that one. Uh, they they scare me. The passing game scares me. But I know that the last time that you were very bullish on Debo Samuel, it was the time that he was the wide receiver, too. So I, I take notice. My MVP this year. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look. The heart wants what the heart wants. This might not be the best value in the draft, but this is an MVP type of pick. This is one of the very few players that you can draft that will next year be everyone's consensus 101. Like, he has that potential. He is not. The last time we saw a rookie running back who was drafted in the first round of both real life and then that caused him to be drafted in the first round of fantasy drafts was Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and that didn't work out that great. He, he was still... Decent. Yeah, it was like was 12 good. and a half points a game his rookie season. But obviously... Yeah, it, finished at 22. Yeah, it, it didn't work out phenomenally. And I'm just... I want to make sure it's clear. This is not that situation. Bijan is a different caliber athlete, a way different prospect. Before the NFL draft, Clyde Edwards-Alaire that year was my running back six in, in, in my own evaluations. Like, he wasn't even up there with Jonathan Taylor or the other guys uh, that it was going to Kansas City that vaulted him into the first and Bijan goes to Atlanta and that situation is so much better than I think most people even realize here's a tweet from Warren Sharp after the draft happened uh, this is what the scheme allowed the the Atlanta Falcons running backs to do last year number one in rushing yards Number one in yards per carry. Number one in rushing first downs. Number two in EPA per rush. Number three in success rate. Number three in first downs or touchdowns per rushing attempt. This scheme from Arthur Smith that Derrick Henry used and then has worked well with you know a hodgepodge of running backs is adding a superstar running back to it. He's going to be phenomenal. He's going to be great for fantasy. He's going to put up huge points, catch the ball enough, get the goal line opportunities. And even if Tyler Algie is... Algier is very involved, which I think he, I think he'll have 150 carries. It, it it's not going to stop Bijan from being great for fantasy. All right, Bijan Robinson, surprise pick from Jason Moore. Didn't know you <laughs> liked him. Well, did everyone not, was really know. upset that he wasn't one of my my guys. Yeah, was my my MVP. No, it makes perfect sense. And we had a a very fun discussion on Bijan on the Dynasty podcast uh, yesterday morning. The three of us. Uh, so. Mike, give us your fantasy MVP pick. It's rookie wide receiver, it, Mr. Zay Flowers of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, you have become I have the, smitten. The, the chips have gone all in. Well, you know how I felt about the, the potential of the Ravens offense and Lamar kind of the whole offseason. That's why I have no notes for these people who, if Lamar is your MVP, fantastic. I think that it's going to be a great season for him, and it was 
well, who's going to be the benefactor of it? And it seemed early on that it would be Rashad Bateman, but he just cannot get back on the field. He's missing practices yet again. Zay Flowers uh, of the first round uh, rookie wide receivers, he is the most complete in his production profile. We're talking the share of receiving yards, uh, receptions, touchdowns, an absolute dominant player in college. Again, Bateman is still not around. OBJ coming off of his second ACL tear. And the last time we saw him with the Rams, he was averaging about 38 yards in eight games with them. Like, this was not a special player. He was catching touchdowns, but the yardage just, it wasn't there. So I'm in on the Ravens, and I think that Zay Flowers can take the leap and actually be the number one wide receiver for this team. And he's being drafted in the ninth round. And the bonus stat here is talking about the difference of offense. So last year, the Ravens used 11 personnel, which means three wide receivers are on the field. They used it 12% of their plays dead last. In the preseason, we were up over 80%. And why is that important? Well, last year in quarterbacks with 80-plus dropbacks in 11 personnel, so we have three-plus wide receivers uh, on the field, the quarterback that led in completion percentage over expectation Lamar Jackson. He is a good passing quarterback. It's not just a uh, he's not just a running back. He is a great passer as well. So I am in on Zay Flowers. Uh, I'm one disappointed in you that you didn't go Alexander Madison. Okay. Uh, I want that. I'm no. I'm just going to take that decision. Sure. As a sign that you believe I am right about him. Uh, no. You made the decision. I do. You want to give the notes. Uh, no, no notes. Yeah, no. You said I, no notes. I had no no notes for it. It was Lamar MVP. Yeah, you, then did you, say, no you did say no notes. No notes. Uh, because we did the, the Listener League draft last night, and uh, B-Ket, the biggest loser, is my co-manager over there. And we're, we're That's planning. That's a good sign. We're, yeah, <laughs> we're planning things out. And he's like, have you cooled on Alexander Madison? I'm like, no, not at all. So... Just but do you see how he thought? Yeah, I yeah. can see that. Yeah, but so, I'm I'm more in. Give me a rookie wide receiver in the ninth with the potential the, to be the number one for a really high powered. Yeah, offense. the the draft capital price for Zay Flowers makes him immune to all of the potential criticism that I might have because I I worry that he could be their number one receiver. He could be their number four fantasy producer in the passing offense. Sure, that is an outcome that you know I worry about a little bit, but um. One more special guest, the legend himself. Yes. The host of the Emmy-nominated NFL Game Day Morning, uh, two-time Emmy-nominated Rich Eisen show host, Rich Eisen, joined us <laughs> yesterday for a special interview, including his own fantasy MVP picks. Enjoy. All right, we got one final special guest for the MVP episode today, none other than... Rich Eisen himself coming in here to share some insights. Man, the myth, the legend. That's right. Thank you. I appreciate that's it. Right. Welcome in. Thank you. This is the uh, back end of a home and home. That's right. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. These two gentlemen across from me had the privilege of jumping on your show last week. And uh, we thought, you know what? No one knows football better than Rich Eisen. So why not I have him come it. on and talk fantasy football with us ahead of the season? I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity. Certainly, are we on the clock right now? Am I on the clock? I'm going to bring it up. I, 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 I can't get another email from your producer or your guy <laughs> saying, you know, with the emoji of football and a clock, which he sent to us. He in the sent it to he, you. It, it, wait, 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 hold on a second. This is a flex and also a complaint. <laughs> He sends this to us in the middle of us interviewing Odell Beckham Jr., <laughs> who last called into this show six years ago. So <laughs> oh, I'm dude. sorry if I'm holding anybody up. Oh, I'm no. interviewing Odell Beckham Jr. Is he available? Is Odell so if, Beckham? If the All listeners right, draft haven't him, draft Odell right now. <laughs> if the yeah. listeners haven't picked up on him, Rich, Rich is joining us on a fantasy football league this year. And um, I guess uh, I guess our management is just um, – Rich is actually oh, on the clock. Hey, what's up, fellas? And what's by the way, on? out of fairness to you, Andy, I'm cutting the third guy of our program out. <laughs> no, so that's fine. Only yeah. two of us are allowed to come on your show, you know. So yeah, no, that's good. All due respect uh, to TJ. Or like, TJ, you can uh, come TJ, here. You or you come in here. You come in here and we'll, like, bust the norm. Come on. So are Rich you, are is allowed ninth to have... round? Hold on a second. We're in the ninth round, yeah. Oh, uh, he wants Brandon Cooks. TJ wants Brandon yeah, Cooks. Yeah, we kind of good value. I was going to say, are you really going to take Odell right here? 
<laughs> not bad. Not bad. He As might kind of a thank you for coming on. I think he might, might get, get back, back to us. us. Oh, oh yeah. You hit the all button here. Oh. Yeah, I imagine he'll get back. I well, think he'll come back to you right? a couple anyway, rounds from now. Let me set the stage here. Rich has Eckler, Kamara, Rashad White, Dalvin Cook at running back. We're taking Brandon Cooks right Brandon now. Brandon Cooks off he's the being board. Drafted. He's being drafted by us right now because TJ is a big Dallas Cowboy fan. And, you know, uh, there may be an I in Rich and Eisen, but I'm a team player. So I'm getting. <laughs> uh, you you getting can tell money. TJ that I actually I'm all in on Brandon Cooks this year. I love the fact that they traded for him. They need a number two over there. And Dak Prescott has shown us that he can sustain multiple fantasy options. So I think that Brandon Cooks still has it. I think we okay. have at least one more year of, Mike, of him being a thousand yard guy. Mike is very proud that Rich took Brandon Cooks. I here. love it. I, I think it's a great pick. I appreciate the uh, the check mark from you. I appreciate it. And I apologize that I I'm sorry. I'm a I'm a control freak. Uh, I normally do the Q, not the A. Uh, <laughs> so I'm the A here. You're the Q. I'll back <laughs> off. I didn't mean to take things over the minute I popped on your pod. My apologies. We, we noticed you were on the clock. We thought that might have been strategic. You're setting up. It was an not. It's pick. called it, it's called content. But also, I don't want any. <laughs> I don't want any more emails, you know, that I'm I'm taking up too much time while I'm talking to America, you know. Yeah, yeah he'll hear about Lord. that. Oh yeah, he'll hear about yeah. that I mean, from us. You know, we'll I, give I, him the I, business. Mean, I, I I have a little bit of an ego, but I don't think everybody should know when I'm on the air uh, all the time. <laughs> but to, to send it to send like a hey, you're on the clock when I'm talking to Odell Beckham Jr. You know, <laughs> this is, is going to give her uh, to him. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's gonna um, be a good league. This yeah. is going to be fun this year. Uh, yes. We are we are fresh off a number of uh, fantasy MVP picks. Uh, I am curious if you have a few names, uh, and they can't all be Jets, but do you have a few names <laughs> no. uh, for on. fantasy MVP this upcoming season? Uh, I'll get fantasy MVP coming up this season. Um, gosh, I mean – it's tough not to go Justin Jefferson, and I know that's okay. the, the lowest of the hanging fruit, but one of my favorite statistics, and I'm saying this for real, in the now 20 years that I've been with NFL Network, I've seen a lot of stats. I've seen a lot of numbers, and I, I think I might have recited it um, with you guys. Not you, Andy. You weren't on. No, no. Um, I, so, Andy would never know. <laughs> but but um, that – Justin Jefferson has set the record for most receiving yards and touchdowns for a player in his first three years of his career. Those numbers are a record for a player in their first four years in the NFL. So he's going to add on to these numbers and keep on pushing out. So there'll be a record for a player through four for any player through five and things of that nature. So it's tough to, um, it's tough to think otherwise that Justin Jefferson isn't, and I know he didn't even go first in our league. I was going to say, no. I wonder who got him in yeah. our league. I was just looking at that. Andy has Justin Jefferson in our league with you, Rich, and uh, he went third, shockingly. Yeah, that was a little bit surprising. I was definitely thinking in a league with you and who you're bringing in, um, it would be a tough one. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we'll tell if Dan that. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I couldn't believe I'm like, wait a minute, it's a half point PPR and Justin Jefferson isn't first. It's the first I time mean, I've seen it this offseason. Anywhere, right? Yeah. So um, but if I gotta go with somebody that's off the radar screen and I haven't gotten him in either one of the two leagues that I'm um uh, I've done so far, and I've got a third one coming up. Um, and this is the one that I've been in the longest, the one that I want to win the most, no no disrespect to you guys. Uh, but we all have one of those, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been the one I've been in the longest. And we always wait till kickoff because we don't want to be caught up drafting before Josh Jacobs signs or Jonathan Taylor goes on pup. We don't we want everything to be as as set as possible. So um, I, I'll go Jameer Gibbs. There's something about him. There's something about him that I just cannot shake. Um, I, I heard that when the Lions took him 12th overall, he beat a whole bunch. They, they beat a whole bunch of teams to the punch. Yeah, I heard a that. A whole bunch of teams to the punch. And everyone was shocked that he went 12th overall. And I, I heard that night going back to, uh, you know, the lobby of our hotel and talking to a bunch of people after that first round in Kansas City that that there were a ton of teams that pounded the table in their draft room for him. and then. Pounded the table in 
anger after the Lions took him 12th overall. Do you, do you um, think that a lot of their excitement that kind of got mocked trading up for a running back was because they knew there were other teams in contention there for him? I don't think they care, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, they clearly don't care about taking Jack Campbell and all the crap that they got for for that. It's just, who do they like? Who do they want? And in the same way that we were, you know, conversing last week, not you, Andy, but, um, <laughs> you know, the way that we were conversing last week, I'm sorry, Andy, I didn't mean to do no, that. No, 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 keep it up. Great. It's yeah. a good bit. More. <laughs> It's a good bit, you know, yeah. and, and I come from the Letterman style of broadcasting yeah. where where I take the bit and I pound it down to the ground oh, and, yeah. and, and then keep hitting it. Um, so, you know, if, if you like somebody and, you know, you're third or fourth overall and Bijan is up there and it's still too early to get him, well, you're not getting him when he comes when you come back. So take him. It's yeah, just the mentality in the draft for real that it all it takes is one to make someone a first rounder. Um, so, you know, we're all just afraid of being the Cleveland Browns being the one to make Johnny Manziel a first rounder, but right. I don't mm -hmm. think John is that type of player. So that's uh, what I was going to Gibbs okay. is a guy. Now I'm not saying I would take him top five, uh, but man, do I like him a lot? Yeah. I was, I was going to ask if we are suckers for the consensus sometimes, right? You don't want to look stupid during your draft. Uh, what was number two here? Uh, Tyreek Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill went but, number two in our league. But you know, it never plays out the way that anybody projects it. NFL draft or or fantasy drafts. We just have like six months to fill putting an order together. Uh, maybe it's better to just go with that. Uh, you know, go with your gut on sure. some of these players. And like you said, you can't. You know, if you're drafting at three, you will not have an opportunity to draft Bijan ever. So if right. that's the guy you want, that's your only shot. That's yeah. where Gibbs is a really interesting pick because. Gibbs is someone that right now is usually like in the third round, but you'll have an opportunity if you want to reach a little bit for him. Um, we do a lot of mock drafts. Obviously, we do fantasy, and Andy has yeah, grabbed I do, Gibbs. I do too. Yeah, Andy has grabbed Gibbs all over the place. He's one of his my guys this season. So, uh, you guys are in sync right now on Justin Jefferson and Jameer Gibbs for sure. Uh, one one final thing for you, Rich, before we let you go. I I want you to know, and maybe this will endear me. Uh, to you for the future, but I think you're endearing. <laughs> for the record, uh, I picked in our bold predictions episode, which we we uh, had a live event out there. You guys were talking about it um, in L.A. I didn't realize the vitriol that would be coming from a Los Angeles crowd, but I picked the Jets to win the Super Bowl this season. Uh, why does everybody in Los Angeles hate that team? Because I was booed into submission. Yeah, they gave him the business. I don't know why either. There's, I, I, I don't, I don't know. There's no. You think it's an Aaron Rodgers up. thing? Um, I don't know. Maybe they just don't like you. I mean, Whoa, oh, oh, and the <laughs> truth shall well, I, set honestly, you I, free. I took two I mean, seconds to get back I to there. I don't. I know. I, I don't. I don't know why. Um, it's probably yeah. an Aaron Rodgers thing. Um, yeah. I, you know, and and again, it's kind of funny. It's just you know, sick and tired of the Jets are like, look at me. Rodgers is like, look at me. But they didn't want hard knocks. They didn't want to be looked at. They didn't want that. Uh, Rodgers hasn't, for all his look at me, uh, been on McAfee's show. I don't think since he said. Hmm. That he wanted, uh, he had intention to play for the Jets. I don't believe. I think he might have come back once after that. I mean, you know, he's just posting and going to Taylor Swift concerts like the rest of, you know, um, humanity. So right. So I, I don't know. There, there's a backlash in the same way that just you know, I, I went all in. Uh, I had no idea. Uh, my guy Brockman, who was standing over my shoulder moments ago, um. I had no idea. He he told me on the air live that there's a bar in Milwaukee that's going to pay bar tabs of everybody um, on days that the Jets lose. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, you know, like I'm so, I'm sorry, Favre to Rogers Packer fan that you're, you know, upset that maybe Jordan Love is foisted upon you right now. But more often than not, he's, you know. Odds are he's going to go to the Hall of Fame because that's what's <laughs> happened. You got the Favre who went to the Hall of Fame. We got the Favre who used us as a transfer portal of the Vikings. <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, you know, and 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 tough tough bar owner, you know, saying uh, on 
I'll pay the tab if the Jets lose. Well, over the last 54 years, that would have been a loss leader for his <laughs> car. You know, like this shows you that they're concerned or he's concerned or she's concerned that that Rodgers may, you know, win more often than not because I guess you're figuring you're not going to pay for a lot of bar tabs this year. I, I don't know. This I, is I, how fans process things. Yeah, I very, guess. But very, like, very can, can we get can we get hope? once every 54 years is that possible can we possibly do that can we you know last time our hope was a, a team whose quarterback ran into the ass of his offensive lineman on thanksgiving night you know, yeah, that was, know that's when that's when hope last went out the window it went out the window into the taint of brandon moore i believe <laughs> Well, That's like, where the Jets' last hope, like, go if you if you go check that man's orifice right now, that's where the Jets' last hope resides. So can we get a break? I don't know why they're booing in Los this Angeles. This is why I was shocked. I, did, you, did you boo the Cubs when they had never won? Yeah, no. It makes Come no it makes no sense. I you, guys, you guys have a lot of hope now. I think right now there's a lot uh. of people like Andy that, that think there's bright days ahead. Do you, do you think that you guys are playoff bound this year? Uh, I I look, man. You afraid yeah. to say it? Are you afraid uh, to say afraid it? To oh, I'm not. Eyes. I'm not afraid to say it. I, I'm I'm not afraid to say it. You have eyes, is what I was going to say. You have eyes. Yeah. Quinn and Williams. That's that's Sauce Gardner. Did you see what Jermaine Johnson's looked like in the preseason? And those are just two of the defensive linemen I've mentioned. You know, C.J. Mosley's in the middle of this defense, and then you've got Rogers. Clearly loves Garrett Wilson. He trusts him. He's already back shoulder throwing him like he's the uh, his previous seventeen. Come on, you know, and if the offensive line protects him and Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook are um, guys who can look like their previous, like last year selves, this is, this is, yeah. this is a, this is a playoff team. And this is a team that can go on a run depending on, it's a very difficult schedule. Their first six games are, you know, home for Buffalo on a Monday night. Then they're at Dallas. Then they've got Belichick. Then they've got the Chiefs. Then they've got at Denver. You know, no Gilligan hats there. And then, <laughs> and then Jalen Hurts and the Eagles before their bye. That's their first six. Oof. It you looks know? really Oof. good after after the bye. So if you oh, can survive you know, these it, six weeks, you could say that. But the Chargers lurk there. Yeah, you the never Rangers know. Lurk there. The Falcons, I think, are going to be better. They're there. Cleveland's there. Washington is there. You yeah. lost me when you put the Falcons in there as a <laughs> as a tough one. That's, that's hey, a bridge too far. <laughs> hey, Say all you want. We don't know. We have no earthly idea. The only thing, just to go back full circle, that we can definitely say for sure um, uh, is is going to happen in fantasy is Justin Jefferson. You know, if 2020, 2021, and 2022 are any indication, as in, you know, every year he's played in the NFL. So, um Unstoppable. Thanks for inviting me to a league where he's there to be taken third. Oh, it's delicious. Pick. That's great. You did, you did end great up league. with Garrett yeah. Wilson in the second round. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. And, oh, I'm, Jalen Waddle in the third. Not too bad. It'll be a fun season, and we're really thankful yeah. you jumped mm -hmm. on with us. So we appreciate it. Rich it, Eisen, the Rich Eisen the Show. Best. The best in the business. Um, always making me feel insecure about my own voice. And, <laughs> Keep uh, it up. Keep and it up. presence on this show. Yeah. So once again, thank you, Rich. Clearly, it's a Los Angeles thing. <laughs> All right. That was a fun conversation. It will be fun playing in that league with Rich and a number of talented folks this year. Uh, we will share some updates uh, throughout the season. And uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you to all the guests yeah. that joined us today to share your fantasy MVP picks. Uh, we'd love to hear from all of you. Talk to us on social media at the FF Ballers. Share in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, this is a good time to head over there, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click the bell. Why? One, you want to see our beautiful faces. Two, mm -hmm. we go live throughout the year, including Sunday Live with Mike, the fantasy hitman, keeping you up to date with the last minute news heading into your roster uh, decisions on Sunday morning. And we are right there, guys. We. The season is right there. I can see it across, over the horizon. And if you've never tuned into Sunday Live, it is. It's we break down all the news. How is this changing rankings? And it's really just therapeutic for everyone as we tilt our faces off together as we make high leverage and really yeah. impactful decisions that will affect the emotional state that you have for the upcoming week. It's just a, a gathering place to melt together yes. into yes. puddles ahead of your fantasy <laughs> season. So 
Thank you again to all of our guests. Thank you to the Deucers for putting all this together today. And tomorrow, a very special final mock draft episode. And then we've got football next Thursday. That is going to do it for today's episode of the show. That was a good time. I always love the MVP show. You mean someday we're going to have to find out if all these predictions come true? <laughs> Very soon, actually. Oh, man. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.